So the other argument they use too, and I, I, I saw somebody in a book recently I was reading use this argument. This is a bad argument. But again, people, when they're just, when they get proven wrong, they get desperate sometimes and they get rebellious. They're literally rebellious against the word of God, but they'll use the law of first mention argument. Now, folks, the law of first mention, the law of first mention. Okay, first off, show me in the Bible where it teaches the law of first mention. Okay, and that's an argument. Okay, listen, preachers I respect are using that as proof that the church didn't start until the New Testament because of the law of first mention. And that is an actual reason that there's, I thought about reading a part of the book, but I like the guy too much. I didn't want to get up here and bash him or anything, but I just think he's wrong. I think still think he's a good guy. I just think he's wrong in this area. But that is a law made up by theologians, not the Bible. It doesn't always work. It's, and it's not the law of first mention. It's just the first mention principle is the way some people put it. And again, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it doesn't. What the first mention principle is, is often in the Bible, the first time you see a word used, and this happens quite often, but not all the time, but often the first time the Bible uses a word, it, in that passage, it defines that word. And then, and then that definition is something you can kind of see used throughout the Bible. And so... It is an interesting thing to look into when you're studying, but it's not a law, okay? We do not just throw out Ephesians 2. We do not throw out other clear teachings of the Bible because of the law of first mention. That doesn't even make any sense. But people are saying that because Matthew 16 is the first time the word church is used in the Bible, you know, if we're using Esword to do our Bible studies, which is what they're, which is what they're doing. But here's the thing, and I've said this before, this is only a problem amongst King James Only Baptists. And we are King James Only Baptists, ladies and gentlemen. We believe every word of God is inspired, we believe it's preserved, but you know what we also believe? We believe there's such a thing as synonyms. Synonyms are a real thing. Two words with the same meaning. And it, folks, if there's no such thing as synonyms, then our Bible has mistakes and contradictions in it. Because it says in Hebrews 2.12, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Will I sing praise unto thee? And you know that's quoting Psalms? It's quoting Psalms 22.22, where it says, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise thee. Whoa, what's going on here? Things that are different are not the same. Church and congregation, they can't be the same thing. Yes, they can. They can be the same thing. Whenever they translated the Bible from, uh, from Hebrew into English, they, would, they used congregation. Whenever they translated it from Greek to English, they used church. It's not that big of a deal. It's not a problem. It's a synonym. It has the same meaning. It's not a problem. And it's, it's not a problem with our theology at all. It does not mess up anything we believe at all when the Bible uses congregation uh, versus church. The, they, they have the same meaning to us. But if you're dispensational in your theology... If you're still trying to separate the church from Israel, that creates a bunch of problems for you. But you know, and then what do they do? They try to hide behind their King James onlyism by going into retardation, and that's not necessary. We, you know, you can be a King James onlyist, believe every word of God is pure and inspired without being a weirdo. You can do that; it's very possible. But for some reason, these people can't do it. So, uh, and and here's uh, turn to Acts chapter seven. Okay, Acts chapter seven. Another verse that we like to use, too, because they'll say, you know, first time it's used in the Bible is in Matthew chapter 16, but we can also show you where the Bible talks about a church before the time of Christ. And we see this in Acts chapter 7. And it says, this Moses, they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge, the same did God send to be a ruler and deliver by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. This is he that was with, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, 
but thrust him from them, and their hearts turned back again into Egypt. Okay, so right there, it, Stephen, while he's preaching, he's talking about Jesus and said it was him that was with the church in the wilderness. He said Jesus was with the church in the wilderness. Now, in this book, and I, again, I'm not going to name him out of, out of respect, he said, in response to somebody who teaches the church in the wilderness doctrine correctly, he said in that book, that wasn't talking about Jesus, it was talking about Moses. Okay, now I'm going to show you how wrong that is. And, and again, and then he went to the law of first mention principle. No, the law of first mention, it's the first time it appears in the Bible. That's not a law, okay? That's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not a law. Let me show you. Uh, when I read that in the book, I was like, wait, that's not taught? That's talking about Moses, not Jesus? And I, I do have a lot of respect for him, and I'm thinking. So I went back and I looked again. And I looked again, I'm like, no, that's talking about Jesus. But here's why they're missing it. This passage right here that he's quoting, that Stephen is quoting from Deuteronomy, is one of the most key passages in the Old Testament in helping us understand how New Testament theology or replacement theology works. And I've never heard a dispensationalist talk about this passage. I talk about it all the time. I bring it up all the time. It is a foundational verse. Peter talked about it. Stephen talked about it. Two to the Jews. They need to understand this, but look what it, look back at verse, uh, verse 37. It says, This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you from your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. Now we know that was Jesus. When God gave them that law, he told them in the law, You do all these things, but he said, I'm going to raise up a prophet. Like Moses, you listen to him. And when Je so that's why, that's how we know too, when Jesus came along and he said some things that might have seemed to be somewhat different than what we have going on in the Old Testament, they were not violating the law when they listened to Jesus because the law told them when he comes, listen to him. And so when he, so he said right here, he's talking about Jesus Peter spells it out for us that this is Jesus. Stephen spells it out for us this is talking about Jesus. And so he said, unto him shall ye hear. And he says, this is he that was with the church in the wilderness. With the angel which spake unto him in Mount Sinai. And with our fathers to receive the light of the oracles given unto us. It was Jesus that was with the church in the wilderness. It was him that was there. He was there with the church in the wilderness. The one that God prophesied he was going to raise up. On their brother, Jesus was always with them. He was with the angel that spake to Moses in Mount Sinai. He was there. They were both there. Moses was there. Jesus was there. But this he that he's talking about here was Jesus. Stephen was preaching Jesus to them. He's not preaching Moses to them. He's preaching Jesus to them. Because they thought they were following Moses. Stephen is letting them know. No, Moses told you to follow Jesus. And this Jesus that we're preaching, he's not some new God. He's the one that our fathers worshipped. In the wilderness, he was the one that was with them in the wilderness. We see examples, too, of God in the, uh, you know, the, uh, manifesting himself in the pillar of fire in different ways where Moses couldn't even look at him. He had to hide and he had to cover his face. But then we also see examples where Moses is talking to God face to face like a man speaks to a man. How does that work? Well, you know why? Because, again, we believe in the Trinity. That was Jesus. That's who Moses was talking to. It was Jesus. He was with them in the wilderness. And, no, and notice how Stephen called them our fathers. Well, Stephen called them our fathers because he's preaching to Jews. Okay. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers, who's he talking to? Corinthians. What are they? Gentiles, we've been talking about them on Wednesdays we've been going through the book of Acts. He said all, that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Looks like Christ was with them in the wilderness, wasn't he? And notice it says... It was our fathers, our fathers. 
Why would he say that to the people of Corinth? You know, whenever we talk about our founding fathers, okay, does that mean we believe we physically descend from George Washington and all those people? No, but they were the ones that founded the country that we are a part of, that we are citizens of. They are the ones that set up you know, the, the, you know, the Constitution, they got all these things going. They were the ones that started this country that we are a part of. So we refer to them as our fathers because of the fact that what they started, we are still a part of. You often hear about church fathers and things like that. You know, why? Because they're the ones that set up certain things that we are a part of today. It's kind of a figurative thing. And so you've got people from Corinth, Okay? And so it's like, and they are a New Testament church. If the New Testament church is some new thing that started with Jesus that is not connected to the church in the wilderness, then how could those Jews in the wilderness, how could that church in the wilderness, that nation of Israel that's a separate thing, how could they, how could the people of Corinth claim them as their fathers? They couldn't. But Paul said they were your fathers. You know why? Because that church in Corinth was a part of that same building. They were a descendant of that. So there is no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that what we are a part of okay, is connected to that church in the wilderness. We are a descendant of that. We are spiritual descendants of the church in the wilderness. And you know what? We go back even farther than that. 